everyone. It's me, Derek D.C. Phillips, bringing you all things frightful. Although the topic of today's video is not quite as frightful as it is thrilling. That's right. I want to talk to you today about the Cormoran Strike series of detective novels written by Robert Galbraith. Specifically, I want to focus on book number six, The Ink Black Heart, which was released this year in August. Now, if you're not familiar with the books, and if you're not familiar with the limited series that was released to stars, I believe, I will not be sharing any spoilers necessarily. I really just want to shine some extra light on this franchise because I don't think that it gets the attention or the adoration that it deserves. The characters of Cormoran Strike and his partner Robin Ellicott, who goes from temp sent to work in his office to full-time partner in crime, well, in crime fighting, they're just incredible. There's suspense, there's humor, there's a little dash of romance here and there. It's everything you want from a detective franchise. Now, book number six focuses on the fallout from a fatal attack on a pair of YouTube cartoon creators. The cartoon itself is known as the Ink Black Heart, and as it gains attention and as it becomes this bigger and bigger property and Netflix wants a piece of the pie, things start to go horribly wrong and Strike and Ellicott are called out to investigate. I mentioned that I don't feel that this franchise gets enough shine, and that's largely due to the fact that Robert Galbraith, the author, is actually J.K. Rowling. So let's go ahead and tackle this elephant in the room. Most of the criticism around this book and the series as a whole is directed at J.K. herself, which I don't find to be quite fair. This was the case specifically for book five as well, Troubled Blood, which also was great. And in this particular video, I'd like to address some of those criticisms head on. They're, they're rumors, really. A lot of them are rumors. They don't have a whole lot of weight once you actually get into the series and you read the books for yourselves. I find much of it to be performative chatter on social media. So, complaint number one is that the franchise and the past couple of books in particular are ableist. Now, I find this interesting because the main character, Cormoran Strike, is actually a war veteran himself. He served in Afghanistan. Again, these characters are so fleshed out that you feel like they're real people and you want to know how their lives progress from book to book. They keep you really coming back for more. Throughout the course of the books, you also find that he lost a leg in active duty. And Strike himself is very poignantly written. He's a very introspective character in spite of his rough or gruff exterior. And so I don't really get the criticism here. I think part of the issue is that we read through the main character's eyes. Essentially, it is third person, but not quite omniscient. And so we get a couple of characters. We're following Strike and we're following Ellicott, Robin. And so we see a lot of the descriptions of other characters' illnesses or ailments through the lens of the main character, Strike. Now, again, he, through a series of misfortunes, lost a leg. And so there is quite a bit of turmoil, I would say. Strike has to come to terms with how he views others who struggle with disabilities, whether they are physical and or mental. And I found that to be a very compelling sort of internal coming to terms through Strike's eyes because it's almost the societal argument of how much weight is assigned to a physical disability that is obvious, that is, an apparent, that is apparent, versus a disability that is not visible, that may be mental. And I found that very interesting and it sparked a lot of thoughts of my own. I also think that there's a big push today to only write from your experience as an author. And I take issue with that to a degree. I don't think that an author necessarily has to have lived every experience that they write about to write about it. As long as there's research done, as long as care is given to address the issue in a meaningful way, like we see in this series of books and through the eyes of Strike, I don't see a problem with it. You may say, well, you 
don't struggle necessarily with a disability, so you don't have the right to chime in. But I think it's a slippery slope when we say, well, this author can't write about that type of situation. Or if I'm an author who is a man, I'm not allowed to write in a strong character who is a woman. I just think we kind of box ourselves into a corner when we start to follow that thread of logic. Does that make sense? Now, the next complaint surrounding this particular book, number six, The Ink Black Heart, was that it's over 1,000 pages long, but most of the pages are filled with tweets. I've read the book, and that is not true. I can dispel that rumor here for you now. What I love about all of J.K. Rowling's books is that they don't feel like they're a thousand plus pages. You know what I mean? With Harry Potter, each page is well spent. We're learning about the characters. We're digging into their world, whether it's magical or whether it's real. This book does dedicate a chunk throughout to online forums, records of tweets, that sort of thing. But it's all part of the investigation. And once you get into the book, which does tackle online trolling of these content creators in sort of a meta fashion, which I'll get to that in a bit more detail shortly, but it's necessary and it really does shed light on the mystery. Essentially, you're trying to figure out who these people, these moderators of this online game inspired by the property of the Ink of Black Heart are in real life. What are they hiding? You're looking for clues. You're looking at how they type. You're looking at all these small, tiny, detailed things. I don't know how JK kept track along the way and ensured consistency throughout of all of these identifying details, but it's a puzzle and it makes for an even more layered and even more nuanced mystery. And so for me, it's not a complaint and it is not just tweet after tweet for no reason. You know what I mean? A lot of the tweets are printed as evidence and so you're getting into almost the case file. It's it's cool. It's something different. I did not have a problem with that. If anything, I thought that the tweets and the online forums and things as our online world and our reality blur, our real lives outside of the metaverse begin to blur and shape. I think it's it's it was an interesting mechanism. Now, the biggest criticism of book number six of this series and the previous book, Troubled Blood, were that they're, they were transphobic. And I've got to say, again, I've read every book in the series and it's just not true. I think, again, this is a slippery slope when you say that a character can't wear a disguise because that's being transphobic. You're making transgender people look like they're dangerous and unbalanced. I, I don't agree. I do take issue with that. In this particular book, there, there was dialogue around trans activism online. There was dialogue around the hard left versus the hard right and where people may fall in between and their, how they're online presence might not actually align with their in-person presence. I don't believe that that constitutes transphobia. Um, in the last book, actually, there was a character who was transgender, and I think that the character was handled very sympathetically. And again, we're seeing things unfold through the eyes of this gruff, grouchy private detective and he's coming to terms with society, some of his clients and their ideology and how his ideology meshes and is checked. I think this falls into that false dynamic that a character or a bad character's thinking actions must reflect the actions of the author. And that's just not true either, objectively. I think if authors were only allowed to write about perfect, unflawed human beings, we would have some pretty boring books. So, you know, I wish people would give a little grace. I do feel that they may have pulled one passage or, or something that was out of context and applied it across the board. And again, it's just not the case if you get in and you read the books. 
So those are my thoughts on some of the controversy, the scandal that's kind of floated around these books. If you do read the comments online, most of the ratings have, have tanked, not tanked, but they have been bogged down by people who just haven't read the books. And again, I, I love this series because J.K. Rowling is a master at world building and each sequel gives us something new. It gives us exactly what we like, what we love, and what we want more of, but it also furthers the relationships of the characters and it furthers the development of the characters. They feel like real people who are growing. I will say just when you think you figured out who done it, surprise, there's another twist. I love that also. That's sort of the hallmark of a solid mystery with twists for me. I was actually really depressed when the book ended because I know it'll probably be another two years before the next one comes out and I find out where the characters are, what they're up to. This last book left off in 2015, if I'm not mistaken. So there are some some possibilities that they'll be catching up in real time and I think that's really great. These books do coincide with world events, so which makes it all the more interesting. There's that added layer as well. I do hope J.K. Rowling will stay the course, you know, say what you will, but I don't see her as a menace to society, and her books certainly are, are undeniably good, right? She is a master author, and no one can take that away from her.